十秒准备，十秒准备，那就玩。二级给你，是二级，也是一个九级。On June 26, 2012, reporters from all over China have gathered in a village in the city of Baoji, Shanxi Province. They stare intently at a small pit that contains treasures that will amaze the world. Some suspect this vessel holds China's most ancient liquor. Some think this container once held a pot of steaming meat. Many fine bronze wares have also been unearthed from the pit, including one particularly large and mysterious piece. Some say it was used by royal families to help prevent excessive drinking. Many questions around this amazing discovery. What are these treasures? Who is their owner? Baoji is Shanxi's second largest city. It's known for Chinese bronzeware. Many national treasures have been unearthed here. Many are from the Western Zhou Dynasty about 3,000 years ago. To date, more than 50,000 bronze artifacts have been unearthed at Baoji. At 9 a.m. June 22, 2012, Shu Hai Jun, a villager in Sha Zui Tou village, finds a few pieces that look like bronzeware. Shu realizes that the green objects are probably bronze wares, so he immediately reports to find to the Cultural Relics Department of Baoji. One of the archaeologists rushes to the site. He removes the dust on the surface and concludes that the green objects found by Shu Hai Jun are indeed bronzewares. They have turned green after years of corrosion. <laughs> However, as the digging continues, it turns out that retrieving the bronzeware is not as simple as first expected. A cellar was a relatively common place to bury treasures in ancient times. The size of the hole determines the amount of treasures that can be hidden. Having cleaned up the surrounding soil, the archaeologists speculate that this is a small pit that can only store a few artifacts. But as the excavation work continues, the archaeologists find another five holes of different sizes around the original pit.
Could this be a seller group? and is about 4.3 meters long, 3.6 meters wide, and 2.4 meters deep. It has two inner coffins and one outer coffin. The only remaining parts of the occupant are some bone fragments. The six holes in the tomb walls are called burial niches. They hold more than 30 exquisite bronze artifacts. Many of the items found on the secondary planet Archaeologists find that the first few bronze artifacts unearthed are engraved with cloud-like patterns and relief decorations. They are patterns commonly seen at the end of the Sheng and the beginning of the Zhou Dynasty 3,000 years ago. The tomb's occupant is very likely to have been a member of the nobility in that period of history. But it's still hard to tell for sure which dynasty he lived in. On June 29, 2012, while cleaning the niches, the archaeologists find a large bronze artifact. It's about 95 centimeters long, 45 centimeters wide, and 21 centimeters tall. It has five faces and is hollow inside. The special patterns on its surface give a clear indication of its date. This large bronze artifact was a ritual object which first appeared in the early Western Zhou Dynasty and disappeared in the Warring States period. There are no such artifacts in existence today that date earlier than the Western Zhou Dynasty. So, the tomb's occupant was most likely a nobleman of the Western Zhou period. But what kind of noble was he? What made him so different? To answer these questions, we need to turn to the text on the bronze artifact and any other evidence from the tomb. But the archaeologists have yet to find any textual messages. On July 4th, 2012, the moment the archaeologists have been looking forward to finally arrives. In the niches, they find a bronze ware that is shaped like a deep plate. There are clear markings on the plate. This makes everyone excited. Inscriptions are often found engraved on funeral items, especially on bronzeware. The texts vary in length and mostly record sacrificial ceremonies, lectures, conquests, awards, or vows made by the tomb's occupant. They are the best evidence to help explain his identity. After a preliminary inspection, the archaeologists find three characters in the center of the plate. There's also an L-shaped family emblem.
next day, they find another two characters in a square pattern on a bronze liquor vessel. The experts speculate that the second character on the plate is one of the ten celestial stems found in the ancient Chinese calendar. The first two characters are likely to be the birth and death dates of the tomb's occupant, or the name given to him after his death. And the last character is probably a tribal surname. The square pattern on the liquor vessel might be a tribal emblem. The two characters are probably his given name. As some of the questions are answered, the figure of a nobleman called Fu Yi appears to be forming right in front of our eyes. But his name also conveys an amazing piece of information. The man buried in the tomb may not be from the Zhou dynasty, but from the Shang dynasty. This Shang 那么除了两个都是现实商文化的这个特征了，但是中国人是不用这个的。Both the inscriptions and the emblem engraved on the unearthed bronze artifacts show traces of the Shang Dynasty. But does this prove it is a tomb from the Shang Dynasty? And if not, why would bronze artifacts made in the Shang Dynasty appear in a tomb of the Western Zhou Dynasty? 这么多商代的铜器，呃，在这个地方出土，呃，最大的可能性就是灭商之后的这种缴获的。Extremely rare for a tomb from the Western Zhou Dynasty to have no waste pit or funerary objects placed in niches. The archaeologists suspect this is the tomb of a minority tribe. They have their own unique way of life and cultural system, and also different burial customs. But if this is true, which tribe did the tomb's occupant belong to? Perhaps the answer can be found by taking a closer look at a famous war.
In 1046 BC, King Wu of the Zhou Dynasty launched the final battle against the King of the Shang Dynasty in Mu Ye. Fajo的时候,除了他自己那个走他那个兵以外,还有一支很大的力量,就是江子牙那一批力量,江姓那一批力量,还有牧师的外有,记得有八个,这个手上民族的集团,跟他一块去打仗的。大概都应该说,因为
In 2011, another mysterious liquid was found in tombs dating from the Western Han Dynasty in Puyang, Hunan Province. Test results show that the liquids contain components of liquor. If there is really liquor inside, it's earlier than any other liquor found to date in China. The bronze liquor container is still sealed. People can only know the answer the day it's opened. Regardless of whether there is liquor inside, the tomb's occupant must have been a lover of liquor. On July 3, 2012, while extracting a bronze tripod from a niche, archaeologists found a green object in the tripod. Through careful observation, experts conclude that the object is made of an animal bone that has turned green through corrosion. This bronze tripod could possibly have once held a pot of steaming meat. With vehicles and spears, liquor and meat, as well as a large number of bronze wares, a clear picture of life of the noble warrior begins to reveal itself. Such a life appears to have had boundaries. The ritual object seems to be a warning to not drink to excess. Some say it appeared following the demise of a country. Others say it can control alcoholism and was once indispensable in the lives of Western Joe aristocrats. But artifacts like these have only ever been found four times before. Join us for part two of Treasures of Stone Drum Mountain. <laughs>